stationary items. Love. Okay, these are so cute. How I travel solo in Aritzia Hall. Happy spring everyone, hence the <laughs> very yellow sweater. But welcome back to my channel. Today I will be talking about how I travel solo and some tips and tricks I have, whether it be through packing, journey, and just landing in Asia. So let's just get on with it. Okay, first of all, let's get into the pre-planning of the situation. And by the pre-planning and the pre-vacation part, I mean getting fit, eating healthy, and doing everything to get your body and your mindset in a good place so that when you go on vacation, you can just splurge and eat whatever the f you want. I just like to go ham because when I'm there, I just don't know if I can fit time to actually be active. Like, am I really gonna use a hotel gym? If you use a hotel gym when you travel, you're a bit crazy. I, I think I've done it once, but like getting in that really fit shape will make sure that I'm like, okay, I put in all this work to make sure that I can be active and like literally not feel sore from walking around eating all day in Asia. There's just so much good food when you're there. So I like to call it the pre-vacay grind so that I can just really let loose when I travel. The second thing I have to say is to really just do your research. I'm going to show my itinerary that I planned. It's a little preview, a swipe through as to each day for what I'm doing. Last time I went to Tokyo, even though I did a mini vlog, so watch it here. I feel like I didn't book things ahead. I was wrong because I wanted to get omakase and the places that I think are really delicious, I would say, are booked up. And I'm going in the spring. Right now it's cherry blossom season, so it's like prime time for everyone to visit Japan. Really make sure that you're booking things ahead of time. We even booked our hotel two months ahead and a lot of things were booked up and the prices were going up. So that's really important. There are certain apps that are popular in Asian countries that are not popular in America. So my recommendation is to not go on things like Eater. So there's certain food influencers that I like to follow. I'm going to put their ads here, see what they review. And if there are restaurants that overlap that they say are impeccable, then that's the one you should go to. I also recommend making a Google doc to plan so that you can figure out which train stops are close to the destinations that you want to go to that way you don't have to go back and forth in your day so that you can just like check things off your list if there's things that you really want to visit okay the third piece of advice i would say is to have a mood board this is kind of just for the girlies like personally when i travel i kind of feel overwhelmed or like i'm not somebody who goes on pinterest that actively until i go for vacation because i'm like what are the vibes like how do i fit into this space culturally without sticking out like a sore thumb and and how do I also like embrace my personal style so that when I go, I can really be like, hey, take my photo. Also, the best thing you can do is to just bring basics. When in doubt, bring like a sweater, a t-shirt, a tank top, and like a blouse. Those things can be so interchangeable. And then bring one everyday bag that you can just carry on your shoulder. But in terms of the saving space, I have a few tips and I'm gonna get on with how I pack my suitcase. All that jazz, we're gonna get into that for the rest of the video. I have some PR behind me and I'm also going to show you what I got from Amazon just to kind of like rush prep before the trips. So we have an Aritzia haul. Their sweats are the most amazing quality. There's fleece inside. They're so comfortable on the plane. I size up so I think I usually get in a size medium but like <gasps> okay this is I'm acting as if like I didn't pick out these clothes but Every time I open it, I'm still just as shook because the quality. So I picked a fleece in this like lilac color. It's also super cozy. This cropped fit, super cute. When I be going through the security, I'm like, because <laughs> I be wearing a cute fit. So this is the next one. This is a different fit. This is called sweat fleece. This is like a mega fit. Looks so loungy and comfortable. I'm obsessed. This goes with the sweats that I picked. So this like super cute hoodie moment. I love the bagginess. It just is so hard to find the perfect baggy hoodie, but these are honestly amazing. Like TNA really nails it. Next, trousers, can't go wrong. Babe, this is like this really cute flared skirt. And then I also have this top. So even this with the skirt is so cute. It's a little rosette and it's braided. She's beautiful. But look how cute this varsity jacket is. I'm obsessed. This is me. She's so cute. Dad wants to see. You wanna see? Wow. It's nice, right? Spiffy. 
Next we have love. Okay, these are so cute. So they're like these cashmere trousers and I actually saw someone working at the store wear them. They look so flattering. And then I got a matching crew neck. So freaking cute. Okay, this is the purple one. Oh my gosh. Okay, I love it. This one has this stitching, but it just looks very preppy and clean. Like I just love wearing this with like a pleated skirt or trousers. And last but not least, the most important part are the suitcases. And my favorite ones are from Toomey. This is my Cal Pack carry on. I want to show you guys how much quality everything is. And then we're gonna pack together. And we're not going with black because my dad says that black suitcases always get stolen or lost. So it's perfect that I love blue. Oh, wow. That's like one finger. One finger. This one's expandable too, which is really nice. Beautiful. When I walk around with these in the airport, I always get a bunch of compliments. You can also like get your initials on the top as a gift to somebody or yourself. But I love it. So we have a baby one! Yay! Yeah. It's a card. Thank you. The most important thing is to have a carry-on that has the slide. What the hell do you call this? Like it's just a piece of fabric, but it makes all the difference because then your carry-on won't like rock around when you put on the suitcase. But I put my most important things in the front, obviously my passport, my wallet. I always have a claw clip clipped onto my bag. Like boomers are so confused as to what this is because it just sticks out so much when I'm traveling, but I think it's great. Like when you need to just put your hair up on a disgusting plane. Okay, now inside I have a bunch of stuff. I emptied out a lot of things just to show, but these are all of the compartments in my purse and there's zippers on the side. So I like to organize it by category. If I have stationary items or I guess like tech accessories, I put them here. And then for everything like beauty related, I put them on the other side. But yeah, I have a toothbrush and things that I want to like get ready for when I wake up on the plane, when I'm about to go to bed. This is really helpful. So these are pens that I use. I always need to film an arrival card or like the customs declaration forms. So you need to always have a pen. Honestly, there's there's so many, so many compartments. I'm like, I don't even remember what which went what went into where. But and then what do I put in here? is I have my travel makeup case. Guys should have one too, in my opinion, because like, if anything, y'all need to freshen up the most. Like y'all be sticking up the plane. Like the girls always have their shit ready. Do better. Anyway, I have sunscreen. You need to protect yourself from the UV rays since it's way worse when you're in the sky. So when they open the windows, you need to have sunscreen. I have deodorant to freshen up. This is blush. Oh man, I mixed this up with like the Glossier perfume. So that's great. I have some hand cream and I I actually don't put sanitizer into my purse. I put it in the outside because I don't want to touch everything else inside my makeup bag to get to the sanitizer to use it. To me, that's kind of counterproductive. So I put it in a more accessible spot outside. Oh yeah, I also have like pimple patches. I'm currently wearing some. So I'm gonna slip that in. I'm gonna put the sanitizer in here. I actually have two that I like to use. This one is easier to spray on surfaces. Next, I just bring a book or my journal or both. And in this case, it's a long ass flight. So I actually read this a long time ago, but I need to freshen up my memory because I've been feeling kind of in a rut. So I'm gonna reread Atomic Habits. And then I just have my favorite journal that I use for everything. Every time I'm on the plane, I like do some heavy manifesting and reflections and I write down things I'm grateful for because like that I can actually take a step back and chill. I feel like refreshed when I get off. So slipping these inside. That's up. 
There's still so many more compartments I can fill. And in the past, we've mentioned that when I want to just like cover up and have a different identity, I'll bring some blue light glasses. That sounds kind of weird, but like, you know, it's giving main character in the airport when I get to have some glasses on, even though these are just like a stylistic choice. Just slip them into my bag. And then I also have my neck pillow yeah this one's really handy just you can just get one off amazon but the nice thing is that you can like attach it to your bag so there's like the key strap that you can attach it to and then that way you can just like have it swinging around i guess i don't know defend yourself from weirdos <laughs> So yeah, it just slips right in. The best thing is that this bag is really secure. So I can just zip it up here. And then I'm pretty much ready to go. 